let's learn how to store these things. And the most common way to do that is something called a variable. It's not called a variable, it's called local, <laughs> but it basically means that you're storing a thing that can change over time. So if you've ever taken algebra, you probably know what this is, right? That is a variable. If you've ever had to, what is it? They say X, solve for X. You know, they have one plus two. What is X? Well, I think we know what X is, <laughs> right? So if you don't know, you can print it out. So let's go ahead and print out, print out A and print out X. We'll hit run. You know what A is going to be because we later wrote it. That's a variable. But one plus two is three. Well, we know that, right? And so you print out those variables. So these variables allow you to store a value. Now, if you are having any experience in algebra, you're going to look at this and go, wait a minute. Take, take local out of this, okay? Why is the, the thing on the left? Because when I was in algebra, it's one plus two equals whatever the result of the problem is, right? And that's backwards. Most programming languages, Lua included, actually do it this way. They put the thing on the left, or in this case, the variable, and they assign it to whatever's on the right. So think of it like I have a variable, and I want to assign it to the thing on the right. It could be anything. The variable name could be whatever, whatever you want. And the right could be whatever data type you want. It doesn't matter if it's a table or a Boolean or a string or even the result of what's called an expression, right, or some kind of function that's going to run. The result is going to run first, then set to your variable, right? So these variables are going to store the result of this or store your data. And so it's a lot easier to type A than it is this gigantic string over and over. And you can reuse A anytime you want to say, yo, right? Having these variables around is really useful to store things and you can print them out. Notice if I don't print them, they don't show. But watch what happens when you use the breakpoint. We're going to set a breakpoint right here and hit run. You can see how the variables are existing over time by looking in something called the watch. The watch is this place in code or scope or script or whatever. You can see all the variables there. And notice how we're going to look at local variables. Local are to the script that we're dealing with. So see the word local? Local? <laughs> they match up, right? Now, if your brain's like, well, this one's capitalized, I love your thought process. But for now, just think they're both local, and that's what I'm interested in. So see this A? It's you, right? And see the B is a table. We don't even know what it is. It's just an empty table, which is fine. Whatever's a Boolean, true. And X is the result of that expression or that math that we did. And so that's how you can see what your variables are. So when you create variables, and they may be dynamic, they could change based on these inputs, and that's fine. We could do yo, and then dot, dot, sup, right? Hit stop, yes, and then run again. And then the result of that dynamic string will be here in our watch local. Pretty cool. So that's the basics of creating variables and storing them.